All right, welcome to what will probably become part one of a multi-part video. Unless I can knock it out pretty quick, I'll probably do two. Uh, what we're going to do here is, you know, per the requirements for you being in compliance with the online attendance policy, for the first week after you've done all the other things you're supposed to do we already talked about, uh, you'll need to walk through me with this and create your online attendance project. This is your attendance activity. So we're going to complete a, just a basic Hello World project in C++ using Visual Studio. Uh, when we get it running, then we're going to zip it up and submit it in Blackboard. Okay? So, let's see what to do here. So hopefully you've already got Visual Studio fired up. If not, pause the video and fire it up. And I want to go to File. At some point it will do what it's supposed to do. File, oh, come on. There we go. New project file new project now this is unmanaged c++ meaning uh, that there's no GUI involved in it but it is a truly compiled language and the reason there's no GUI is because of that is more of a intermediate to advanced class uh, the other like vb.net and csharp.net it does a lot of what we call code behind and, and does a lot of the housekeeping tasks for you uh, which C++ will do, but you have to manually wire controls, control objects to the main form and other forms. So it's, it's just a little more complicated. All right, depending on, you know, what you had selected last, if anything, it's going to select that, or it may just come down here to other project types. It just depends on your setup. But we're doing Visual C++. All right, so I want you to select that and expand the window. And over here in this rightmost window, I want you to select... Win32 console application. This is like the old DOS window output and input. So that's why it's called a console. Now, remember that uh, we were going to, or we created some directories, one for projects and one for uh, database, or not database, but your data files. So what I want you to do is come down here. We have to tell it where we want to store this project. So I'm going to go over here to click the Browse button. And we're going to find our device. In my case, I'm using a remote hard drive. It could be your C drive or whatever. And there's my 251 directory. And there are the two directories we created earlier on in the welcome video. So here we go. We need a projects directory. If you haven't created these, go ahead and do it. Uh, hopefully you did. And there's projects. It should be empty because we haven't put anything in there. Now, they just want the folder. So you drill down inside that. They don't want a name here. It already picked up the name you selected. So don't type anything in. It says select folder, not file. All right, so it picked that up here. Now, here's something I want you to get used to. You always need to change the default names of these applications. Don't send me an application that says console application one or, you know, something like that. All right, so we're going to get rid of that, hopefully. There we go. Now, the solution name here tracks the name of the, of the project. So when you whatever you type in here, it shows up down here, too. Make sure that create directory for solution is checked and make sure you don't have add to source control checked. All right. So this is, we're just going to call this uh, attendance. Well, it's not letting me type. Oh, there it goes. Project. Okay. Notice it picked it up down here. So with all of that having been done, we can now click OK. This takes us to another window. Now, this is really important if it ever pops up. No, it's got to run through and do some stuff behind the scenes for us. This is not the fastest laptop on the planet, but it works. And that's saying something for our stuff. Okay, you have an overview here, and we want to click Application Settings. Now, you may want to go through this several times, because if you screw this up, your projects will not run. And it's not that difficult, but you just need to know how to do it. So you may need to revisit this video. All right, so click Application Settings. Come on. There it goes. All right. Now, when you do that, you'll see application type. It should be, by default, select a, a console app type. All right. So, that should be selected. Now, what you want to do here is you want to uncheck anything that's checked under additional options. You do not want pre-compile headers in there. But you do want an empty project. And once you do that, this will be disabled. And so, you don't want any of that. In the end, what you want is console application and empty projects checked. You have to uncheck all these before you check that one. If you have this one checked, you got a problem. This is why this is very important. So I'm going to click Finish. There 
and after some period of crunching and spinning and wheezing it will build the application so you may want to go to the restroom while this happens maybe your computer's faster i'm going to have a sip of coffee and if it takes too long i'll edit this portion out but for now There we go. Okay. And over here, what we have is a solution explorer and the properties box and the output window at the bottom. All right. You shouldn't have anything in here as far as headers and stuff go unless we've included them. But right now, it's an empty project, which is as it's supposed to be. Now, the solution has one project in it. You can have three projects in the solution. We're not going to be doing that. But if you were doing a an actual real application and you wanted to have, let's say have a setup routine where it installed everything on the user's computer that might be a separate project in it in the same solution with the actual application so that can happen so what I want you to do is down here under source files I want you to right click on that boy this thing is so slow today there we go all right well, you'll get a pop-up window that says add Okay, so you right click on source files, click add, and I want you to click new item. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to create a .cpp, which we call a source file. .cpp stands for C++. And it's going to default to this. We want to click that up here. Make sure you don't click header file. Now, again, the name, you don't need to do anything with the path. It already knows where everything's going. I'm going to do that once. We're going to change this to attendance. Dot cpp click add and eventually it will add it gosh I can't believe how slow this thing is today wow not responding see that wonderful Microsoft thing there it goes it's trying to do something well, what we can do is minimize this, and let's go to Blackboard. Whoop! It's doing something. What did it do? Hang up on me? Wonderful. Let's go to Blackboard. I may have to rebuild that. Oh, it looks like it's going to lock my machine up. There it goes. All right. Uh, we want to go to Content and Blackboard while we're waiting. Content, come on. Gosh, network's so slow. All right, we want to go to student resources. And we want to open this student template like I showed you a while ago. We're going to do this again. Let's open it up. Open in a new tab. Try that. I need to close some stuff out. I think I got too many things going here. Untitled. Now oh, there it is. Again, down here. All right, let's uh, open that. Never seen so much stuff. Code writer. No, I don't want to do code writer. Gosh. Is it going to make me do code writer? See, I didn't ask for that. I just want to open it in Notepad or a browser. Well, all right. We do it the hard way. I'll tell you what, I suggest you do this anyway. Download it to your, wherever your working location is. Where is it? Student template, here it is. And just copy it and move it to wherever you're working. Thank you very much. That's not what I asked for. All right. This may be a three-parter by the time I'm finished. I'm going to put it right in here. And you can, I mean, you can open it up as a C++ file, or you can rename it to a .txt. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll do that just so I don't have to deal with that code writer. That's something new that I have not seen. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, yes, I'm sure. All right, let's see if it'll open now. There it is. I just opened it in Notepad.
which you can do. I just changed the, the file specification to TXT. Now what you have here is just, I'm trying to save you from typing a lot, just to start something from scratch. This is our comment section. We'll talk about that as we get into it. This is a multi-line comment which starts with a forward right slash asterisk and ends with an asterisk right slash or left right slash forward slash whatever you want to call it. This, so this is a single line comment which has two slashes. These are includes. There's probably going to be more, there will be more of these as we get into it. But that'll get you going for your basic input and output. So all this stuff in here is always in your program. This is your main function and this is a declaration section for variables, input, processing, and output, remember that? And there's a system pause. The reason for that is if you don't put pause the output, it'll run your code and then return zero back to the operating system, which will then unload your application, and you won't be able to see what's going on. If this were a real EXE that you had stripped all the debug code and stuff out of, you wouldn't need that. But for what we're doing, we do. So Control-A to select all, Control-C to copy. And then we're going to go into, hopefully, there it is. See, there's my source file. And notice what it's doing. It's sitting on an empty attendance.cpp. There's nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right there, and I'm going to do Control-V to paste, or you can right-click and paste either way. At some point, it will hopefully do it. There it is. Now, notice that the, uh, the comments are always green. Now, what comments mean is, the compiler ignores a comment. So you can put notes to yourself or other programmers in there. And notice I always want you to put the project name, which in this case is attendance. Author is you, whoever you are. Description, first project. All right, that sort of thing. And then we have our includes and, and other comments for different things as we get into it more. All right. Uh, this looks like a good place to save. Click Save All, little two disks. I don't know what they're going to go to when those finally go away. And now we have the skeleton of our first project. Now I'm going to pause it here, or I'm going to end this video and start part two. That way you don't have to watch 40 minutes of video. I'll see you in part two.